say to you that the struggle started way a few years back from that voicemail. And having the knowledge and the spirit in my heart and knowing that this life right here has turned left, as they could say. So I got to get out of here and flee for my life. And I hid for over two years of my life. I hid under the name of Jan Taylor. That anyone that knows me as a friend, they know me from my family name is Jan Taylor. And I knew my ex would never find me because he called me Jennifer. That was my real name. So sometimes you go through things and you don't understand what the struggle is about. And as I went through the counseling to try to re renew me, renew me, I had to get a whole new identity. I had to change the way I thought because I thought like a married woman. I thought like life, life differently. So I never knew what it meant to uh, be out there trying to struggle and figure out a job. Where am I going to go back to? How am I going to get back to school? Went into Long Star, long story, long story short. I entered into the international program. I knew I wanted to go into international because my ex-husband and I had a transportation company where we transported yachts across the country and in and out of the country. So I had a, a connection with Freight Ford and then all of that and I said, I don't know what else to do. I, I love doing that, so I'm gonna go back to school for that. I went through the prerequisites and I got to the point where Lone Star said, well, we can't take you any farther. And I was like, oh boy. And so we go to HCC. I think they have an international program. And that's how I got to HCC. Did my first semester. Next semester, bam, here comes Harvey. I'm just coming out of the domestic violence program. I'm in an apartment. Um, and the struggle is still there, but I'm still focused on the prize, the end in prize. I gotta get this degree because I gotta be able to identify myself. I gotta be able to take care of me. I can't call home and ask for help. Plus, when I call home, they say, come home. And home is Fort Lauderdale. They said, just come home. Disconnect and come home. And they didn't understand that what everything that was coming to me good at that point was in Houston. So when Harvey hit and the financial aid was, I felt like it took forever. It was slow. Like, what is happening? I need the money to help take care of things that are going on. And um, my apartment is getting ready to go through a repair. And I don't have anywhere to go. I guess I could go sleep on some friend's couch. But I've been there before. I walked that path where I slept in my car. I walked that path. I didn't know where my food next meal was coming from. So I was walking through the hall one day at the main campus, and I heard some students talking about the finance, the Harvey assistance. And I was like, can you tell me more about that? And they said, just go to financial aid. They have the paper there, and you fill it out. So that's what I did. I went to financial aid, fill out that form, and I, they said a couple of weeks, well, it seemed like those couple of weeks took forever. I went up there like every other day and said, is it time? Do you know the answer? And they're like, no, Miss Taylor, just, you know, you'll hear from us, you'll hear from us. And finally, I saw a guy like when I had asked the apartment complex, listen, I have like a few more days. I know that the assistance is coming. Um, just give me some time, because during Harvey, I lost my part-time job because of the flood. We couldn't get to work. So I was like, I just need a little more time. And they're like, we got three days, and we can't help. We, the, we can't help. And I, that last day, I called, and they said, well, you'll hear something from us. The people at the desk, they didn't know. They said, well, we don't take care of that, but you should hear something any day now. A lady called me who I had met as an evacuee at NRG. She was an evacuee, and here I am helping her get out of her cot that she's living in in NRG, and I'm about to get evicted any day now. But she called and said, I need you to help me go to the um, license bureau and get my license so I can be able to get funding and get help. And I took her, guys. And in my mind, I was so, she asked me, she said, what's wrong with you? I said, I just got a lot on my mind. I'm full because I'm scared to death of being homeless again. Not having something of my own and going back to having to ask someone, can I sleep on your couch until I can make it? I'm standing there and I get the call. I saw the call come on my phone and I don't answer phone calls. And, don't know what the number, who's the number. So I was like, I'll let them go on the voice now. I don't know what that is. And someone says, just go out there and listen to the message. And I listened to the message. And it said, we were trying to reach you to tell you that you got 
the same guy who I had called, went over to talk to him all the time. I forget his name, I don't think he's still at um, main campus anymore, but he was the one that called me because I gave him my number a couple of days before that and said, I'm about to get put out. Soon as you know something, please call me. And he did. And when I heard that message, nobody in here, if you, I don't know if any of you have been in that position, domestic violence, or if it, you became homeless from another avenue. But it's all the same, because when you are at the end, and you know it's nothing that you're doing, you know you're trying to do your best, you're not a freeloader, you're not trying to get over anybody, you're studying, you're trying to make it better. And all I needed was to get put out, because I, don't, I have got to the point where I'm mentally and emotionally here, and my grades are good, I get put out. I'm in someone's house, I'm digging how I'm gonna do all this stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose the fight, I'm gonna lose it. And to hear his voice say that was the best thing that ever happened to me. And any other people that's in here that make the decisions about that funding, you're hearing it from me, but I'm the voice of a whole bunch of people sitting out here and those who are not sitting out here, that we need assistance. We need to know because of what we give when we're in school. We need to know we have somewhere to go to be able to help us when the times get hard. Because to start over, when you come this far, a lot of times, and Jamie got know her, it takes a heck of a situation to come back. Many, like myself, don't get to come back. You don't get to come back. So, I end with that, that guys, my fellow students, no matter how hard it is, because the struggle is still in my life right now. It's still in my life. But I keep my eyes on the fact that it can't get worse than back there. It can't get worse than back there. So what's before me, I just got to keep pressing on and connect to the resources. When I tell you ACC is the bomb, because I went to the other school, and I'm not trying to put them down, but I'm just going to say it, ACC takes it to a different level when it comes to resources. When I walked in the office and told, said what I needed, they just, if any other things, sometimes the food, sometimes I get a little low, it gets, it gets a little tough, and I'm, I'm not afraid to say I'm in trouble. And when I tell you ACC, I just feel like they have everything. I don't know what else, they got everything that I needed. And if they don't have it, I've had women in, the, in those desks give, say, give me your cell number. I'm not sure about that, but I'll call you or I'll email you how to get to that. That's what this family is all about. And I just wanna say thank you.